I haven't turned the camera on for a minute. So uh, there's the cooling tubes, 23 and a half inches long. And um, I don't remember what the length out here was, but I made sure underneath I had three and a half inches. So that'll give me plenty of room to snipe these off. And the only reason I haven't cut them off yet, I need to get some radiator hose that's the right size to go over that and make the clamp. But so those are all welded on now. I just gotta get that radiator hose and a whole pile of hose clamps because they'll get cut off top and bottom and then a piece of radiator hose in between, two hose clamps each. And then the hopper cooling tubes are removable if I ever need to separate the two piece hopper or if I ever need to clear out the tubes uh, if they get plugged up with tar or anything in the bottom. Of course, had the barrel clamp down when I did all my welding. Uh, if I were to do this one more time, which who knows if I build another gas fire, I would make this four inches tall. I noticed that Wayne did that on the Wilbur Smith build and I missed that detail. That's a very tight spot to get a weld into. I welded all the way around it and there was about a half an inch gap across the top I couldn't reach with the clamp ring on. So I took the clamp ring off and left the lid in place and finished off those welds across the top. But that's pretty much it on actual fabrication of the hopper. It could potentially go back on. The only other things is I gotta get some springs that will get mounted in here to act um, to help with the puffer lid assembly. And then the lid still needs to get built. I need to get a fill lid that goes on top with a clamp down locking ring. Um, what else did I do? Oh, I built this little guy. So this is the same three quarter by three quarter eighth wall uh, rectangle or square tubing that I used to make the bottom mount for the gas fire. I just built a seven by seven square piece of 3 16 plate that bolts down on top with some quarter 20 hardware. And I'm gonna clean up the side here and that guy's gonna go on right there. Um, I added in this additional cross member because I'm gonna be standing right here loading wood in it all the time. I wanted to have a good sturdy cross member. It's set down on the frame to be the same height as the back one. So the two by fours will sit flush going all the way across. I did have to splice this tubing back together because I didn't have a single piece that was long enough. So I left a three inch tab top and bottom and then left a three inch side on the other piece fitted them together, welded it up, um, welded that guy in. And as an afterthought, I think I'm gonna put another stand down mount right here. And that'll end me up right now with six bed mounts. But I didn't think about that before I welded this cross member in. So I'm gonna have to build the stand right here. And when the bed comes off the last time, it'll get set in place, put the bed back on and finish weld that in. And because I'm gonna have a mount right in that hole, I'm also going to utilize that and take a piece of quarter inch strapping and run back to the gas fire mount over there. And then I'm going to take another piece of that quarter inch and run from that to the front mount on the bed over here. So there will be a basically a piece of quarter inch strap running all the way down the top of the frame rail and that will completely encapsulate the gas fire mount. That means I can pull the bed with the gas fire on it one piece. Um, I won't have to do that yet because I do still have to pull the bottom barrel back out, finish welding the ammo can, blow the hole out, weld that guy on there, blow the hole out, and I still have to set up the air inlet and gas outlet on this drum over here, which I didn't tell you guys about that. I opted against the super thin wall barrel. I didn't, I just, I wasn't happy with it. So that is a uh, well water tank that I cut down and put the barrel lid on so I still have a clamp down lid up here so I can pull it off and service it, you know, be an easy deal to work on. But welded that back down to the flange and onto that. So now I need to get some radiator hose to finish up the hopper connections and the tar drain connection. And then I need to get some exhaust pieces that will be the gas and air inlets over there weld that guy on and pretty much gas fire construction will be finished from there wherever I figure out the gas output is going to be then it's on to 
building the cooling rails that come around the sides. Still need to find the right rear tank, run those two lines. And whenever that tank gets mounted, the way I, one of the reasons I lifted the bed as high as I did, that's a three inch window underneath of the cross members. So I'll have my two gas lines coming out the top of the tank, up and over this cross member, straight forward, straight shot, tons of room to move my pipe around in there. And whatever I figure out for a hay filter, that will sit over here in this corner. I thought about dropping the hay filter down to the same height as the gas fire, um, but I don't really think it's gonna be necessary because I kinda wanna see if I can find a toolbox that I can mount over here in this corner and I don't wanna burn up that space against the frame if I do find the right toolbox. So uh, yeah, that's where I'm at. Still plenty to do. Lots to build. So there's the completed two-piece hopper. Upper half, bottom half, removable cooling tubes, 250 degree rated um, radiator hose, the heavy duty stuff from Gates. Two-piece uh, targering, clamp in the middle. This one is just clamped at the moment because I need to set the hopper back on and get this lined up with the tar drain and the front rail. Then this will get welded in place. Um, Amazingly, my hoarding of hose clamps over the years has finally come in handy. I was two hose clamps short on everything I needed for this hopper, and that's two clamps, top and bottom, all that. So I got to get two more, um, which I already got from O'Reilly's, but it's a box of 10 and I only need two. So I'll go get like $15 back, and then at $27 a foot, I get $27 bucks back. So today was rather expensive uh, having to actually buy materials, um, but still, I think I'm into the whole build right now, like $370, $380. Bucks. Um, I did have to buy one other thing piece of exhaust pipe adapter. This is the next thing, one of the next things I'll be working on is the <coughs> air inlet going into the heat exchanger body over here on the truck. Um, but I got one other thing I'm gonna finish up. I have one thing left on the hopper itself, and that's we're gonna make some mounts to actually draw it down onto the lower barrel and actually encapsulate the fire tube to create a good seal. Uh, I got some material sitting over there for that, so that's probably the next thing I'm gonna do. Once that is finished welded onto here, I can finish painting out the hopper. Um, I haven't decided if I'm gonna paint the cooler tubes or not yet, because I haven't decided if I'm gonna do fins on it. Uh, the only reason I'm not doing them right now is I don't have the material that I want um, to create the fins and have more <clears throat> surface area to cool the cooler tubes down to help it condense more liquids out of the hopper but if by the time the truck is done, I come across that material, then I would have to go back through and strip the paint off the cooler tube. So I don't, I don't think I'm gonna paint them just yet. I might come across that material. If I don't, by the time the truck's all put together, I'll paint them, no big deal. But so anyways, next thing is the hopper clamp or tie down assembly. We'll get that done. Then the hopper can be finished painted and then moving on to the air inlet and then a center post of some sort and the gas outlet. Once those two things are done, then finish fabrication for the heat exchanger body will be done. And I could pull the lower drum, finish up my welding on the ammo box and the access door and get all of it painted. 
and that'll just be down to the actual bed work for the rear condensate tank, the hay filter, and the plumbing, and the cooling rack, which I still haven't come across the material for. I'm trying to do everything as cheap as I can. Um, the last truck I built, I got a carport given to me that just happened to be the right size material, 60 millimeter tube, and I didn't have to buy any material for that. The problem with doing that this time around, I don't have any more of that material. I used it all up, and the closest thing I can get for a decent price is two and a quarter inch exhaust pipe. I can get it in 14 gauge aluminized finish for 42 bucks a stick, and I need seven sticks. 10 footers. That's, that's a lot of money investment, uh, especially when I'm trying to build the whole thing as cheap as possible and out of scrap metal. So I might hold off on that and just see what else I can come up with. I've been surfing around Craigslist, offer up, trying to find something else. Uh, I haven't come across anything that would be perfect yet. A couple things here and there. I'm looking for somebody that's got a carport frame, uh, just like I got out of, off of the last one. But uh, haven't found any lately. I, well, I have found a couple, but they're the super light duty ones that Costco sells, and they're only an uh, inch and five eighths pipe. And I want more flow than that because I already framed the bed in two by three. That's a lot of surface area, um, but I also want a lot of surface area on the cooling rack to help condense out as much as possible. Plus, it would go better with the look that I'm going after with tube sideboards. Uh, if it's closely size related to the bed itself. Yeah. All right, more work to do.